And what's going on back there? <laughs> Well, here is something a little bit different. Maybe a lot different. These, uh, these are my normal bikes that are always kept in pretty good shape, really, overall. And then, and then there's this. <laughs> what the heck is this? What the heck am I getting myself into? This is uh, kind of a bit of writing history for me, I guess. This is a 1982 CB750 Nighthawk. This is the exact bike I basically learned to ride on. This was originally my father's bike. He's, uh, he's had a plan for it for a while now for me to inherit it, I guess. And that plan started probably 15 years ago when it was parked in a shed on his property. And it hasn't seen daylight since, up until just over a week ago when we uh, made the trip up there and picked it up, brought it home, and started this process. So, what have we done so far? First I brought it home and started stripping it down. Pulled the seed off and started finding all the... Uh, hidden rodent nests in it. There was a mouse nest in here underneath where the charger is. There was another one here where the air box was. It had, uh, the mice had eaten part of the intake snorkel. I even found another one inside the exhaust pipe for cylinder three and four. So, this process, like I said, it began quite a while ago, earlier this winter. I brought home a set of carburetors, actually, these right here. Those are carburetors from another CB750 Nighthawk that my father owned. Still owns, actually. That one's also been sitting idle, but for a much, much longer time. Those carburetors he pulled off of that bike years and years ago, in anticipation, I guess, of one day fixing it up. I brought those carburetors home over the winter here, and I rebuilt them, just so I could get a head start on this, I guess. Guys, do I have something different here? Is this is a set of carburetors out of one of my father's old CB750 Nighthawks from the 80s. 82, I believe. a second I'll give the radio a break there yeah like I said these things are out of an 82 Nighthawk and that bike has spent decades sitting in a field not running he had a second one that was running he used it and this one was basically just a parts bike now the other one that was running isn't really doing anything for the last decade also. So I think we might start a little project here and see if we can get that thing back on the road. These things definitely look like carburetors that have been living in a field. But it's uh, also pretty amazing that they're, also, they're actually in pretty good shape. Much better than they look. Like these slides. They're not the smoothest, but nothing seized. All the uh, choke linkage works fine. The uh, throttle linkage, nice and smooth. I actually had the bowl off of uh, this one. And it's actually very clean inside. The jets look clean, everything looks good. So if this is on the non-running bike, getting the one that was running back on the road shouldn't be too much trouble, I think. My knowledge of carbs is pretty limited, so this is going to be a learning experience. So I guess this is going to be step one. Give them a soak in some warm water and pine salt. <laughs> 
and the old toothbrush treatment. Try to get some of the dirt off the exterior of them anyway before we start pulling them apart. All right, so it's the next day. I've let these guys soak overnight, and they came out looking a lot better just from that, and then I've already gone over them with a little bit of brake clean and kind of wiped them down a little bit. Like I said, they're looking a lot better. But, again, these things have lived in a field for a long time. They're looking pretty grimy. I'm now trying to decide if I want to split them up. I, I was just obviously going to take them apart and clean them out, but now I'm wondering if I should split them individually and, you know, clean in between and make sure everything's good that way. I'm not sure what to do. We'll see, I guess. Like I said, my carburetor experience is, you know, pretty limited. But I was still expecting to see a, a rubber diaphragm in here, and there's none. It just uses these, like, aluminum piston. The needle is actually uh, trapped in there. You've got to unscrew it to get it out. There's no, uh, there's no steps on the needle either. You can't really adjust the, a clip on it. You could shim it, I'm sure, if you wanted to. It's all pretty cool. I should probably uh, go have a peek in the manual just to make sure I'm not missing anything here since this is set up a little different than I'm used to. Oh, we'll just keep tearing these down, I guess. Well, here we are in the process now. I was really considering not splitting these up, but then I took the air cutoff valve out of here because it was accessible on the end, and it looked horrible. Kind of like this. Focus. Anyway, you get the idea. The diaphragm and everything was in pretty rough shape, so I figured it best to split them up. So I've got the innards of this one soaking in some vinegar, which has got to come out now because I don't want to get in there too long. And then the innards of this one are going to go in there, and I'll finish cleaning them up. And we've got to relocate on the way from Amazon. We are days and days and days later. We finally got some rebuild kits showing up. Doesn't really make a lot of sense in some ways, though. It's uh, each kit for each curb has two different jet needles in it. Neither one of them look very much like the stock ones. The jets that come in it kind of look like they're or like OEM jets, but I don't know they're. The sizing is weird that's stamped on them. It doesn't look right at all. So, I guess I'm mostly just after the uh, O-rings and such. Everything else that's came out of the carb seems to be in good shape, so I think we're going to reuse most of that. Anyway, time to start some reassembly. How is this for a time gap? These things have been sitting for a long time, and I finally picked it up again in the last day or two here to get them back together. I can't even remember in the last update if I know mentioned that like kits have shown up but they're not really the right kits. They have some right pieces. They have a new float bowl gasket on them. That's the main thing I'm after. Everything else was o-rings and they come with an assortment of o-rings too so I used some of those and then used some random o-rings from a kit I got. Anyway, this is the last one. I'm just uh Finishing tightening down the accelerator pump here. That's about it. It's time to start racking them back together. These two are already joined, and this one needs to be joined to this one. And then all four go together. Took forever to get to this point, but I mean, there's still a ton of snow on the ground where the bike is stored, so 
this isn't going together anytime soon anyway. Now we're right in the middle of the whole pandemic thing too, so plenty of time to hang out in the garage and work on crap like this. That's it, racked and reassembled. I'll probably end up having to bench sink them before putting them on the bike. The chokes are working way smoother. Couldn't get the plates as clean as I want them to, but you know, they're like 30 years old. What can you do? Super smooth now, they close all the way. They wouldn't do that before. Finally. These are the carburetors that were on this bike when I hauled it home. They're in pretty rough shape. The, the choke is even seized. You can't even move those plates. And the fuel inside of them and the fuel inside of this old fuel tank was absolutely disgusting. I'm sure you can see in the picture here, it's pretty much just black sludge. The inside of the tank is rusted pretty bad. And all that old gas is still sitting in there. I got it drained out now, but something will have to be done with that soon. So, first things first, I just immediately tried to see if I could get it running. The engine wasn't seized, surprisingly. Just rolling it to my truck to bring it home, I could get it to spin the engine over by putting it in gear. So I didn't have an adapter for my compression tester, so I just immediately tried to start it. And I eventually got it to fire up. You can tell from the sound though, it didn't really sound the greatest. Even when it was spinning over with the starter, you could tell something was up. It didn't sound right. It didn't sound like it had even compression across all four cylinders. So I borrowed my buddy's compression tester adapter, and he also had a leak down tester, so I grabbed that as well while I was there. And that really told me what was going on. I had about 25 pounds of compression in cylinder three and four. So I had a feeling that it was leaking out the exhaust valves. And I was right, the leak down tester proved that pretty quick. Now, I'm gonna plead ignorance here because I was thinking that this was one of the CV750s that had hydraulic valve setups. In other words, it didn't really need valve adjustments. It had like a hydraulic rocker setup, so valve clearances were always in check. I was wrong. This is most definitely one of the CB750s that needs regular valve adjustments. In fact, it needs valve adjustments every 6,500 kilometers or at least valve inspections. This bike has about 70,000 kilometers on it and I can't tell you if it's had any valve inspections. I'm assuming in its very early life it may have had one at least because that tends to be the most important one I've found and if it wouldn't have had that first one I can't imagine it would have made it this far. Anyway, just as I was assuming, we've got an exhaust valve on cylinder 4 and 3 that's basically just barely cracked open. It's being held open by the cam. So I'm just waiting right now for a special tool to compress the buckets down so I can get those shims out of there and get them measured. So that's where that's at right now. But the fact that I could actually get this bike fired up and running, you know, half decent... It's pretty impressive for having 25 pounds of compression in two cylinders. That gives me hope that it's, you know, still going to be all right once I get that sorted out. As long as those exhaust valves aren't all burned to hell. So, so far we're into it for the carb rebuild kit. New battery here. I just got it obviously loosely in place because everything has to move to get that air box out of there. Uh, things that are going to need to be done. We're not talking about the overall look of the bike or, you know, making it pretty or anything like that. That'll, that might come much later on. But just to make it function, all the brakes were seized. 
So you can see I had to unbolt the caliper, or both calipers, just to get it to roll so I can load it in the truck. Right now I've got one caliper removed, and I've got it stripped down here on the bench, starting to clean it up. The front suspension was a bit of a mess before the bike was even parked. It's very weak. It's on a stand right now, but it's very easy to bottom out. Of course, tires, chain, brake pads. The brake pads literally fell apart when I removed the calipers. I'm sure the rear brake pads will have to be looked at. I think they might be all right though. I seem to remember us replacing those before this bike got parked. But you know, just the usual things like the brake lever is almost solid. It's completely seized. Cables, the choke cable I ended up having to cut off because I showed you the, the choke linkage on the carbs were totally seized up. So the only way to get them out of there was to chop that cable right off. Throttle cables don't seem too bad. They actually move, you know, grips. This master cylinder reservoir is just awful. The gauges actually seem to work pretty well. They still light up, even you know, headlight high and low beam still works. Still got the running lights working. Signal lights don't work. I'm guessing the flasher relay is crapped out. Horn, dead. Clutch cable, pretty much seized. Got a new one of those on the way. Starting to gather up parts for it little by little. Just trying to make sure I don't jump into this too fast and spend a whole bunch of money on it before I know I have an actual salvageable engine here. So yeah, this is the project. I figure every once in a while I'll throw up a video of this thing and show where we're at with it. Maybe before long it'll actually be a riding video with it. But right now that seems like an awful long way off.